Hey, what's up everybody? 3D Theory here. Today is September 18th, 2024 at 1020 AM. And this is vlog number 54. All right guys, so today we're just gonna talk about a few things going on in the uh, tiny 3D print farm of five Bamboo Lab A1 3D printers. And for those of you who are new to this channel, I usually print a set of plates and latches. Here's the left latch, right latch, left plate and right plate on these 3D printers. And once the spool filament runs so low that I can't do one full plate and one full latch, I throw it on the Bamboo Lab A1 with AMS light combo. And like you see here, once one finishes up, it moves to the other. But production has been on pause in this small, tiny 3D print farm because we needed to make 300 units and we reached that. Now we're assembling the products and they take some time to build. And so if you guys wanna see some of that uh, production material, just go back to some of my older vlogs and you'll be able to see that. But we're gonna get production started up eventually once again. Uh, what we've got printing out over here is something I've been working on for some time probably about a week. I was having a real difficult time putting this thing together. So what this is, it's my logo and I wanna put it up on the wall there, but I also want it to light up and I wanted it to do it on a budget. So I had a box of near empty spools of filament here, which this is the last one. Oh wait, it's done. So this is what remains from what was in here. There's nothing left. And since my logo is blue and white, like you see here, I wanted to make sure I do the uh, proper colors, but I noticed one thing. I'm using a light, like a little ring light that I took apart and I have the light portion only over here. And I'm not using transparent filament. I'm just using a very thin piece of blue filament that I got over here. And remember, I wanna do this on a budget. So I realized when I turn on the light and it's really close, it doesn't really illuminate that well. It's only when I bring it out a bit is where the uh, blue gets illuminated fairly well and uh, you can kind of see it light up. So for that reason, I needed to create some depth and this is definitely not deep enough for that light to sit in and illuminate this. So what I'm doing here is I print it out with some of the old PETG. And by the way, I do use the uh, gray PETG to print those things out down there for production. And this is that same PETG. Some of this is three months uh, old, four months. It's just been sitting out of the bag with no desiccants and it's still printed out fantastic. But yeah, this light is gonna sit in here and I've got the other pieces printing out right there because it was too large for the 256 millimeter cube build plate of the Bamboo Lab A1. And these pieces are just gonna sit on top and illuminate it like I need it to. So like everything else, none of this stuff was uh, able to fit on the build plate properly. So I had to cut that bottom there and that top and then I epoxy welded it. And hopefully from afar, it just looks solid. But that's a project that I've been working on in the background and I don't know why I was having such a hard time with it, but um, there's other ways of doing light up signs. Um, I just wanted to use this ring light which is bigger than the build plate. So inherently I had to make the sign a little bit bigger, but I feel like this sign would be perfect for the size on that portion of the wall. But nonetheless, we have some backed up projects. I did end up 3D printing these boxes. So it just looks better with the, um, with the rack instead of you just using cardboard. But I did have one print failure, which was very strange. It was a number two and it said it had finished, but it didn't. <laughs> and um, I think what might've happened is uh, a jam occurred or something and the A1 didn't pick up on it, but nonetheless, the print quality looks amazing. And over here, we got the uh, box for uh, printer number five, which is this one here. So I don't know if you guys followed along with the uh, stealth TV tray build. I don't have any of those prints to show in here just yet, but I got some really cool prints. You guys can check out my Maker World. It's linked in the description. It's free models you can download and print. And um, someone saw my stealth TV tray, a family member, and they wanted one in uh, this gray color here. So I'm gonna be printing that out pretty soon for them. And uh, we still need to build out this A1 
top mount, which I'm really excited for, and the prints came out great. But um, to do that, we're gonna have to uh, finish up what we've got printing out over here, which looks like we got about another two hours and 27 minutes. And I'm um, really hoping I could finish this today. And I've been putting a lot of hours on trying to make this work. There's more efficient ways of doing it if you had the material, but I didn't want to spend any money on it. I just wanted to use, it was kind of like a challenge for myself. I wanted to use what I already had laying around um, and my own 3D modeling and designing skills to make one. And hopefully this gives me what I need and hopefully the light shines through this. If not, I can always order some transparent PETG and just print this out again. Good old Knott's cup. Uh, good coffee. By the way, it is 70.7 degrees Fahrenheit in the 3D printer room with a 54% humidity level. That's a lot. That is a lot, guys. So ever since I've did a little bit of a makeover to the 3D print room and adding this cool steel diamond pattern mat to the floor, it's been kind of unbearable to be in this room. This is made of styrene. A specific kind of styrene and it just smells so bad it, the voc is coming off of it i actually let it uh degas outside i opened them up and just put them out in the yard for about a few days and then brought them in and then put them in but it's just such a strong odor coming off of this i gotta return it so there's a little bit of extra back and forth going on with this you know room upgrade but at the end of the day I really want to be able to work in here knowing that you know it's safe and so i went online and i found the same exact style of floor pattern but it's made from pvc which is and i quote virtually odorless virtually odorless compared to what i have here sounds great but nonetheless all this stuff are <laughs> empty spools of filament and i remember back in the creality days because i used to have a, uh, which I still do, I just stored it away for now, a Creality CR10 Smart, Creality CR6 Max, and a Creality Ender 3 V2 Neo. And I almost never had empty spools of filament because you never knew when it was going to completely finish. And let's say it's midnight and you got maybe four strings of filament left there. You know, you're not going to stick around at midnight. You need to sleep. So you just switch it out and you'll have some filament left but we've got some empty spools of filament and these are all empty boxes so i'm really thankful for these bamboo lab a1 3d printers we're almost finished kind of updating this room i do have to put that ams light combo mount finish up with this and i didn't end up doing this wall i just figured i got my big old light here and it'll reflect off that and illuminate the room a lot better if i just left it this you know reflective blue but i do have enough of this um brick material to be able to do this wall i wanted to ask you guys what do you think you think i should just finish doing the brick pattern on this wall as well or you think leaving it this blue color is fine let me know i'd love to know you guys' thoughts on that all right guys so i know in the last video i mentioned i'm working on a prototype and uh this is it here so and again i can't really speak on what it's for or any of the applications but i could show you how i went through my prototyping process i needed something that i can put on a tube and um, have a wheel you know roll around on that so i knew that i wanted it to be able to come on and off easily and i was planning on using something like this here which it's kind of like a mount for your ATV and it's metal and you can put that styrene there for grip and it enables you to uh, kind of have a nice grip on the tube but the only problem is that every time you'd want to take it on and off you'd have to screw on some hex bolts uh, two of them and I just felt like that would be too much of a hassle so instead what I did is I got a bike clamp that has a little ball here a little rubber ball that i think you can attach some sort of like phone holder to or whatever and uh, i used my soldering iron to kind of wear away at that rubber which was really stuck on there and used pliers to peel it off and this is what was underneath and so i got my uh, drill press and i drilled the hole that would fit into this office chair wheel screw and i threaded it 
the same threading. I think it was a eight millimeter diameter hole with a 1.25 millimeter thread spacing. And so this way you can just easily, you know, take this off and, uh, you know, wrap it around the tube and put it on and clamp it right back into place pretty easily. And uh, having that available for, you know, the things that I'm working on, the projects, would be a real easy way to take on and off a wheel. And maybe in an upcoming video, I can show you the entire process of how I did it. But this was the final result, and I intend on doing more of them. And I can kind of show you what I did. Just knowing how to thread and all that is a great skill, a great piece of knowledge, a great tool in your belt um, as you're going through prototyping. I was going to 3D print some pieces, but I didn't know how well it would hold up to weight and pressure. And after doing the tests with the Stealth TV tray, I just wanted to make sure that the amount of weight that this is gonna be bearing would be solid. And so this is a uh, CNC'd aluminum, by the way, and it's a great piece. I just bought these parts off of Amazon and I kind of put them together. But nonetheless, this was that prototype I was talking about and it turned out great. So with that being said, guys, I got some cool little projects coming up the pipeline here i really wanted to finish up this room before moving forward uh, i kind of adopted a philosophy early on in my career that is when you start something finish it and uh, sometimes you don't need to finish things uh, especially if they're not working out and i kind of learned to loosen up on that philosophy a little bit but definitely still holds true in most of the projects that i deem valid and worth my time so i do want to finish up this room here which includes the light and the uh the mount there and once we're done with that i feel like i can move forward and we obviously have to uh switch out the floors once again but i can't stop everything for the floors that's gonna come when it comes and i'm gonna have to find some time and squeeze it in to move these tables around again take off all these printers and put these uh new mats in but nonetheless, I think I'm going to save putting this light together as well as the uh, mount for another video, maybe the next one. So that about wraps it up for today's video, guys. It's a little short one today. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, peace, love, and joy.